Welcome to the Breakthrough Success Podcast, helping you achieve that breakthrough you've always been looking for in your business. And now your host, Mark Guberti. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Mark Guberti, and this is the podcast for marketers and small business owners who are looking for the breakthrough for their businesses. I am very excited about this show. For episode 52 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast, we are going to talk about turning your blog posts into a book with our guest, Amy Morse. Amy is a restless entrepreneur and protagonist in the story of her business. She helps authors turn their business book dreams into realities. Amy equips these authors with the tools and confidence to tell the stories of their businesses. Her range of services includes ebooks and advice guides, one to one support workshops, and copy editing. With her help, businesses can be better at writing and writers can be better at business. And now it is my pleasure to welcome Amy to the show. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. Amy, it is a pleasure to have you on the show. And we're really going to talk about how to turn those blog posts into a book. But first, I want a little background. So how did you first come across the concept of writing a book based on blog posts? Well, it was, it, it started the other way around in, in a funny sort of way. I, was, I started my, my very first blog when I was writing my first fiction book. Um, and so I started to create content that way. Um, and at first it was kind of a marketing exercise to sell my book. But then as time went by, I started to realize that I was creating this massive library of really useful information and knowledge that I could then share um, and so when I started my consultancy business in 2015 and, and started a new blog supporting small businesses, I continued to blog and continued to create loads of great quality content. That um, And when you write a blog post, you never, you never write it once. You can keep reusing that content over and over again and repurposing it in different ways. And when you start repurposing information into different formats, then you can start to monetize it. And probably one of the quickest and simplest way of doing that is by converting it into an ebook. And I know yourself, Bart, that you've had quite some success doing that as well. Amy, thank you for sharing with us how you first came across that concept. But one objection that people seem to have with this approach is, well, the blog posts are free. Why would people buy a book if it's just based on stuff that's already free on the web? And I wonder if you could just shatter that objection for us. Yeah, um, you, first of all, you need to add value. I mean, if you're going to create an ebook, then it isn't just going to be exactly all of your blogs or anything like that. It needs to have a purpose. So you need to have some kind of a structure for your book and perhaps just take one theme um, that's within the content that you write. Use some of those blogs, but... And some of them, yes, you could literally copy and paste bits of them into chapters in the book, but actually you need to be adding value. So actually it's better really to, to draw inspiration from them, add to them and dig deeper because when people are paying for a book, when they're paying for information, they're not expecting a broad brush kind of approach to something and just some kind of basic tips they can get for free. What they're looking for is some real deep dive information that goes into a lot more depth on the topic. So very often, actually, what can happen is it can a book idea can spur from a blog post and then you can use other blog posts just to build into that. But all the time you're building other capital and other value into that content just so that you're giving people something that they wouldn't otherwise get. So I suppose... You wouldn't, if the stuff is out there just on the blog, then there's no reason for people to pay for it. But if it's stuff that is only in the book, but is enhanced by the blogs and vice versa, then suddenly you're adding some value. Thank you for shattering that objection for us. And now that we have this idea, well, hey, you could turn your blog post into a book. I'm wondering if you write the blog post thinking about that. So for instance, do you strategically think of blog post ideas and say, hey, these can mix and match into my book later on? Or do you just happen to write the blog post based on what you think about and what your audience thinks about and then see which ones work for a future book later on? Yeah, well, I think it's a bit of both, actually. Um, so once... What I sort of found is that with when I did my uh, my blogging for business book is the one I was thinking of in particular, actually, which started off um, because I was writing so much content and um, giving people tips on, on how to blog to grow their business. I started to realize I had a lot of stuff. So that gave me the idea to turn that into a book. So in that instance, the blogs came first. But then once I'd started the project on the book, 
then that then started, I was in the mindset that that's what I was writing about at the time. So most of the content that I was producing across all my other platforms was also kind of related to the book. Because at that point, once you start to write the book and once you have start to put that stuff together, at that point, you need to start marketing it as well. So you don't market the book once it's actually out there. You market it in the run up to the book as well. And so all of that content feeds into that into that machine, really, and it, and it all kind of perpetuates from there. So so to answer your question briefly, really, it's kind of a bit of both. It, in, the case, in my case, it started with the blogs and then became the book. But then more blogs came off the back of the book once that book project had started. Ah, uh, so that makes a lot of sense because you don't know what the book is at certain points, your next one. So that's when you write blog posts based on uh, what you think of plus what your audience is interested in. And then when you had that book idea, you saw your audience was still interested in this topic, but you focused more on it because uh, your book was coming up. But uh, regardless of uh, the percentage of book content, that's also blog post content. And um, basically, one of the things that we need is we need to have the ideas for the content. So how can we generate more content ideas? Oh, wow, that's a big question. There's lots of different things you can do to generate content ideas. For me personally, it's really old school, but I carry a notebook around with me everywhere. Um, just a little one that fits in my handbag. And I just sort of get into a routine of when an idea strikes me, I, I jot it down in my book. I also write unintentionally. So I... In those dead points in your day, if you're, you know, waiting at a bus stop or you're in a reception waiting for something or you're hanging around in the car or whatever, waiting for something. Um, and it's really easy just to get your phone out and just waste time on social media. Those little dead points in your day are quite a good time to just do a bit of stream of consciousness writing in a, in a little notebook, actually. It's surprising how how quickly you start to sort of unblock ideas by doing that. And just by developing that regular routine for writing, um, very often it starts to spare ideas. So if you're writing regularly, then ideas sort of start to flow anyway. And you've always got something you can look back on. So that's one way. But then also other things you can do is, I mean, we all have a little camera in our in our pockets these days. We all have a miniature computer. We all carry a video camera around with us. So when you're out and about, take pictures, anything that inspires you. And very often that can spur on the idea for a blog post. Sometimes it comes from just things that people say. So, for example, I'd be in a, in a meeting with a client and they might just say a really lovely little soundbite that, that spurred on an idea. So I'm thinking of um, something somebody said to me um, recently, which is... Um, Oh, I'm um, just paraphrasing slightly, but it was do what you're good at and outsource the rest or something. Do what you do best and outsource the rest. That was it. I think I'm not sure who originally said that, but she said that. And I was like, that's a great idea for a blog post. So it's just being open to ideas more often than not. And then just having the tools at hand there and then to capture those ideas. So for me, that's a big part of coming up with ideas. But also, um, in terms of the development of my business, I'm in the process of building an online course at the moment. So actually, my content plan, if you like, is a very loose plan. Again, just in a notebook is these are the topics of all the workshops that I'm creating that are part of that course. And so what subheadings, what headlines can I think of? What can I brainstorm from each of those different topics? So for each of those 10 workshops in the full course, I've kind of gone through and brainstormed ideas and, and headlines and things from that topic that I could write about. So for each one, I've got kind of a plan of 10 or 15 potential blog posts that I could write for each of those things. So therefore, I've, I've like got like two years worth of content. I'll probably never write all of it, but I'm never short of ideas. Amy, thank you for sharing with us how you're able to come up with all these different ideas. And I love how it's just being aware for the ideas. You never know when an idea is going to strike you. You always have to keep your eyes open and look for those ideas because they are going to come and you are going to want to take advantage of them uh, once you uh, make those ideas. Like um, once you come up with them, you're going to figure out how to make them happen. So one of the things we tapped into earlier was... Uh, you said that you'll take some of the blog posts, you'll put them in the book, and you'll make changes to them. And I'm wondering, when do you decide, uh, when do I edit this blog post? And when do I decide, okay, this blog post is great, it doesn't need any editing, just put it in the book? Um, again, you kind of have to take it on a bit of a case-by-case -case basis, really. I think um, you probably find that most blogs, would. there's always going to be at least a little bit of editing, depending on how far 
up back you go as well because if you pick up a piece of content you wrote two years ago then naturally your skills as a writer will have improved through um through practice and through getting feedback so you'll you'll read back and there'll be bits and you'll be like oh gosh that's awful or there might be bits oh that's really good um and so naturally you'll want to edit it anyway but also if you're writing a, any blog post worth it so it must have some sort of a call to action on it so it might be that maybe you're writing a blog post related to an event that you're going to or whatever um, and so actually when you put that into a book that kind of element of that blog post that isn't evergreen so in other words it's going to go out of date you're just going to take that out anyway so actually it's very much taking it from a case-by-case basis and there's always going to be stuff that you're going to change even if it's just taking out the call to action but they'll always be little tweaks and we can't help but just you know correct ourselves and rewrite stuff so <laughs> And um, one of the things also with blog posts is like if you go on my blog post and you try and turn it into a book the way it appears, it's I mean, I don't like uh, like I produce valuable content. Like I, I don't like, you know, talking like myself like that. But um, <laughs> uh, I uh, like if you do that, it's going to be a mess because like page one productivity, page two uh, dominating Twitter page three absolutely so yeah you need a structure how mm-hmm. do you organize the blog posts so that they follow a proper sequence and it's not like productivity twitter facebook and like whatever everyone's i've written yeah i think one of the things actually often that people make a mistake with when they when they're creating a book is that they they're desperate to just cram all of their knowledge into their book but actually that's kind of the wrong approach because um, because, as I say, what you really want is a deep dive exploration of a topic. So actually, what you would do is you would go through your, your blog posts and your blog library um, and you'd make some decisions about what content that you've got a, enough volume of and enough knowledge about that you could do a deep dive and, and explore in more detail. And then you can literally just subdivide it into, you know, all the blog posts that are about networking, or all the blog posts that are about blogging, or all the blog posts that are about Twitter, whatever. Um, and you can very quickly kind of go through that and if you've got sort of lots and lots and lots of blog posts you can literally you know almost just copy and paste that into say a spreadsheet for example and you know data sort it by the word twitter or whatever there's different ways you can do to make it simple but um but you need to kind of if you are when you are writing a book don't try to cram everything in choose one element of what you know and then go into that in more detail and then that is going to guide your um your criteria for what blog posts are going to be the most appropriate and then of course um it means that you're open to be able to do that process all over again for a different topic so it might be that you've got 50 blogs about twitter that you can turn into a book but you've also got you know 30 blogs about blogging or 40 blogs about facebook or whatever and each of those different chunks of topics if you like can be a book of themselves so so one book um, it's kind of never really enough. You sort of once you start doing it, then it's much easier to start to produce more books, and it just gives you more traction, really, in, in terms of Amazon and things. If you've got more books out there, Amy, thank you for sharing with us how we're able to organize the blog posts that they form a book. And once you write the book, I mean, you have all the blog posts, you put them in the book, but to make that book successful, you obviously have to drive sales. So, what are some of your go-to methods for selling books once you have published them? Again, I think with a book, um, with anything, you're producing a product. So actually, you do need to have a business plan of some form for you for a book. It you don't have to go into masses of detail and download a 50 page document or whatever, but just a very loose framework of what it is that you want to achieve with the book and where you're going to start and look at what networks you've got out out there so that's that's kind of a massive question really there's loads of stuff out there about marketing but i suppose if i was going to pick my top things um i mean the most obvious one is just content marketing through so blogging and things because i'm all about blogging anyway so if you if you search for hashtag amy queen of blogs you find lots of stuff that i've written um so for me very much content marketing and sharing that across social networks and um, and hosting people as guests on my blog and guest blogging for other people so my most of my marketing is very content driven and um, but then there's so many other things i mean for example i do quite a lot of networking here in my home city of bristol in the uk so that means that i'm quite well known in my local business community as kind of an expert in my field and and all that just sort of helps in the real world and also kind of online so um as many different things as you can do to raise awareness of you and what you're trying to sell always make sure that you have call to actions and anything that you put out there and then i always say really this the key to successful marketing is little and often so just keep going just keep plugging away make it part of your routine do a small thing every day 
and uh, for the majority of this interview, we've been focusing on the book side of it, but you also have to write the blog post in order to get this concept of turning the blog posts into a book. So focusing more on the blog now, are there any other ways in addition to writing the book that can grow, that, that you can use your blog to grow your business or create additional products? Yeah, I mean, there's so many different ways. And in a funny sort of way, my whole business has been built on a foundation of starting a blog a few years ago for for my book. So um, just things that I've done personally that I've had experience of is that content that I've created, I've repurposed into um, into talks that I've given at events. Um, I've repurposed it into training workshops that I've delivered and been paid for by businesses to go in and and run a workshop on blogging for business, for example. Um, and I'm now in the process of, of turning all of that that collateral or that content into a online course. So there's all those different things that you can do. And each of those um, bits of chunks of information that you repurpose and repackage just can add value to your business and just increase your portfolio of products. So, so it could be books, it could be talks, it could be workshops, it could be online workshops. Just in terms of social media collateral, I mean, you can use it for, you can convert it into infographics. You can have like little inspirational picture images um, and bits and bobs like that. You can turn it into videos. Another thing I've started to do more of is is vlogging recently. And and so you can kind of, you can do a vlog based on a blog or a blog based on a vlog. And, and there's lots of different ways that you can kind of reuse it. Um, and some of those potentially do have money attached to them. So yeah, so that's how I've kind of done it. So I've kind of evolved from a blog to books, to training, to talks, to now an online course. And there are so many different ways you could do that. And I'm happy that you shared some of the top methods for turning your blog posts into products and also using it to grow your business. And I'd like to go to the next part of this interview where I ask a few questions so that we can get more inspired and have some resources we can use to really take our knowledge to the next level. So the first question is based on something that we all have to deal with is challenges. So what is one big challenge you have faced on your journey and a powerful lesson you learned during that challenge? And for me, as a small business, it's making that transition from trading my time to mon- for money to creating products that I can sell. Because um, I've been doing consultancy work for just over two years now. And so that the problem with kind of going and working for a business for the day and getting paid for the day is that one day might be relatively lucrative, but it's just those seven hours of your day that you're getting paid for. And it might be a one-off job that you're not going to go back to. Whereas if you can create something that you can resell over and over again, then you make money while you sleep, as Warren Buffett put it, I think it was. (laughs) Make money while you sleep. (laughs) So that, yes, that for me is just making that transition, really. Mm -hmm. And thank you for sharing that big challenge with us. And One of the next questions I have, this is my inner bookworm coming out. So what are three great books that you would like to share with Breakthrough Success listeners? Um, In terms of kind of business books, actually, one book that I quite enjoyed recently was um, The Storyteller's Secret by Carmine Gallo. Um, And that's quite good because each chapter, it's kind of telling the story of of essentially like a celebrity entrepreneur. And I must admit, it does get quite formulaic partway through. It's a bit repetitive. But the lessons in it are really good. And you can dip in and out of it quite quite easily and pick out information. So that was a really useful one. Um, Another, it was a bit old school, but I recently read The E-Myth Revisited by Michael E. Gerber. And it's a little, it's it's a, a few years old now, the book, but it's still really up to date and still really relevant. And it was quite interesting because it's about um, the key argument in that book is about thinking about your business when it's finished, if you like. So what will it look like in the future and how would you structure it if it was an organization and not just you and your you and your business partner or something? So that's quite a good one for just sort of thinking more, more strategically. And then a third one that I've recently read is Watertight Marketing by um, a lady called Bryony Thomas. And she's actually also hails from Bristol here in England. And um, and she's developed a, a model of, um, of marketing um, for small businesses. And so Watertight Marketing is another one I've very recently just just read it, which is really useful, really practical, lots of good sort of steps and tips and there's sort of workbooks and things associated with it as well. So that's almost quite a good kind of all round lesson one in marketing principles. Amy, thank you for sharing with us those three great book recommendations. And before I give you that plug to say this is where you can find me on the web, I've been asking you a lot of questions and 
I'm wondering, what is one question you believe that we need to be asking ourselves more often? Gosh, uh, how am I going to make money today? <laughs> it's a good one that I came up with recently. Um, I had a really kind of quiet period where I didn't have many bu- many bookings. And I was just sort of sat there at my in my home office up in my attic thinking, and it, the question just popped into my head, how am I going to make money today? So I think that's one that we sort of sometimes ask. It's really easy to get into the kind of mindset of doing it because you love it and not really not really paying, um, not really charging enough for, for what you do and giving away too much stuff for free. So if you can think of things that you can do every day just to make a bit of money and push forward that, then then you can't, you're onto a winner really. So, Amy, thank you for sharing that great question that we should be asking ourselves more often and for sharing all of your great insights throughout this episode. And I'm wondering right now with the spotlight on you, where can we find you on the web? So my website is amymorse.co.uk. So you'll find some information on there. There's also an events tab. I've got a series of free webinars. I do one one every month for the next few months on different elements of um of how to grow how to grow your business with blogging. So uh, amymorse.co.uk. Um, Twitter, I'm Amy Morse underscore writer. So come and give me a follow on there. I'm a bit of a Twitter fiend. I'm usually yanging around on there. All right, Breakthrough Success listeners, if you want to find Amy on the web, go to all those places. Those will be linked in the show notes, which you can find at markguberti.com slash E52. We'll have more info there as well and some notes on the episode. Amy, thank you for taking the time to share all of your insights on the Breakthrough Success podcast. It was a pleasure to interview you today. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. To never miss an episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on whatever player you are using. If you are a regular listener and haven't done so already, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give this podcast a review or a rating. Two ways you could do this are through markgaberti.com slash iTunes or markgaberti.com slash Stitcher. That ends this episode. Don't forget, dream big, achieve greatness, and unlock your potential today. Want your tweets to get retweeted to my 360,000 Twitter followers? All you have to do is say something nice about the Breakthrough Success Podcast and include the link markguberry.com slash iTunes. Once you've posted that tweet, email me mark at markguberry.com and I will retweet your tweet to my 360,000 followers. This podcast is a production done by Mark Guberti. For more insights, head on over to markguberty.com.